And here's the thing. Almost half a million families are thought to have fallen behind in rent as a result of the coronavirus crisis. This is according to the Resolution Foundation. We'll speak to them later in this programme. It said more than 750,000 people are behind on housing costs last month. That's 450,000 more than January last year. They said despite widespread calls for for forbearance in the face of COVID-19, just 3% of private renting families have been able to negotiate a lower rent over the last 12 months, according to the think tank. Meanwhile, one in 20 private renters say they've been refused rent reductions. Now, there's two very distinct parts to this story. You're ahead of me on this. There are tenants and there are landlords, and I want to hear from both here. What's interesting, when we've talked about this before, other than some pretty ugly scenes that, and I think in... Often a small number of cases that can break out. Uh, There's been a kind of tacit understanding between landlord and tenant. Not always, uh, but there's often an almost an irredeemable inevitability uh, in some respects about this. The tenant loses their job or they're on furlough. Whatever happens, they haven't got the funds to continue paying the rent, to continue their rental obligation because of forces outside of their own control i.e. a pandemic. So this is exceptional stuff. The landlord understands it, but of course the landlord also has a mortgage. There's this sense that the landlord is some, you know, stinking rich miser who's got a property portfolio, when in all likelihood the landlord is somebody that owns one house. Uh, and they may have a mortgage on that house as well. If they've got a mortgage, they've also got to pay their mortgage. So they, they don't get the rent, they can't pay the mortgage. So the irony is the landlord loses the house. Are you in any of that equation? Are you that landlord? Are you that tenant? 0344 499 1000. It's fantastic when it works out rather well and you're able to negotiate it. and Nobody gets kicked out and you can keep it civil and the landlord can afford to take the hit for a bit. Sadly, that isn't always the case uh, and the landlord can't take the hit, but the landlord is left in no other position. However, taking action, of course, is a problem because landlords have been banned from evicting tenants until at least the end of March, which offers some security, according to the foundation on this study, security for the tenant, but not, of course, for the landlord. So this is a curious conundrum. They want the government to offer loans to tenants so they can ease rent arrears uh, because they think this crisis is going to get worse in the coming months. Where are you on the property conundrum? How has the pandemic affected you paying or receiving rent 0344 499 1000 i mean we know every year you know there are people who royally try it on um, somebody quite close to me had a, somebody living in their house they didn't want to go uh, because they knew that if they were put in emergency accommodation by the local authority uh, that wouldn't be to their liking so what they did they made up a list of things that were wrong with the property, essentially just invented it. All they were doing, on the advice of many forums that tell you how to do this, they were prolonging the process. So they said, you know, you better get round here, local council, have a look at the kind of muck that I'm living in. Uh, and this person's uh, spick, and, spick and span. There's nothing wrong with this. They've got mould here. There's danger. There's dangers in the garden. The kids go, there's glass in there. That was one of the accusations. There was glass in the garden. Well, the guy had been there about two years, even if there was glass in the garden. I'm not quite sure how you put that at the foot of the landlord. Nonetheless, this went on for about, that bit went on for about six months. And in the meantime, the council, of course, because the council had nowhere to put the tenant. So the council, it's in, almost in the council's interest to appear to take the tenant side. So the landlord's only option is to evict the tenant. And that also isn't a straightforward process. So you've got another three or four months into this equation that eventually when evicted, then the tenant gets given a, a, a better place to, to go and live. So then they're not put into the, the bed and breakfast that they were fearing. They got themselves, actually, as it turned out in this case, quite a nice townhouse. It worked out brilliantly for the tenant uh, for the landlord, uh, cost her about 3,000 quid. Uh, completely down on the deal. Totally down on the deal. So we know there are those kind of cases, and I'm sure some of those cases are still ongoing. I mean, there are organisations that specialise in telling you how to not pay your rent, and almost 
kind of make a political point of this based on this slightly skew if misplaced perception that the landlords are all stinking rich and they're having it off royally with your money and they've got pots of it. So what does it matter if you don't pay the rent for half a year as if they're going to miss it? It's that misconception. Uh, and many of the people in those positions are actually still working. There was one on one website we looked at. Uh, there was a nurse that said, I, I can't any longer afford to pay my rent. So, well, hang on. You haven't lost your job. You're still a nurse. You're certainly not earning less in the last year. Arguably, you'd be earning more in the last year. But for some reason, it sort of becomes a bit political. So if you're the landlord in those kind of cases, that's pretty rough. Uh, what are you meant to do on that? You know, even if you have got a few quid in your back pocket, so what? That's not the way it works. You've cut a deal with your tenant and your tenant can't pay or refuses to pay or could pay but won't pay. can't pay, won't pay, is one of the slogans some of these organisations use. 0344 499 1000. So this can be devastating for landlords who are just simply trying to get their ducks in a row and earn a little bit of extra money, do what people are told to do, take some responsibility. They found themselves either inheriting a house or buying a second house, whatever it happens to be, do the right thing. I'm le less reliant on the state if I do this. Isn't it fantastic? Somebody's got a roof over their head. I'm making some money and it'll be my pension in years to come. What's not to like? And then you get scuppered by this. So if you are the landlord and you've been landlord land for landlord read, you know, landlady, whatever you want to, whatever title you are most comfortable with, of course, then I want to hear that, that side of it. I want to hear the ramifications, the difficulties um, and what and all that that entails with this, because it's just not straightforward. And you can't at the moment evict somebody. And in all probability, you don't want to evict somebody. You don't want it to come to that. You'd like there to be some other resolution to all of this. Uh, but what if you're the tenant? How is that panning out for you? Uh, because you took on something in all good faith. Uh, there was no doubt that you had all the paperwork to prove your income. Uh, you had the paperwork to prove the, the, that your job was you know, secure. You were able to pay the rent for a period of time. And then the pandemic comes along and wipes out any semblance of security through no fault of yours. And you are in that horrible hole of, of simply not knowing what to do. Where would you go from there? If you've got diddly and you're not entitled to any more from the system, what are you meant to do? And my fear with this is that we haven't even begun to hear the extents of the problems around this. Bearing in mind, there's an awful lot of people on furlough in this country right now who in all probability in the coming months are not going to be on furlough anymore. And I hate to say it, in all probability, not all of those people are going back to jobs. We know that that big hit could still be around the corner. You know, you hope, you just hope that this becomes very temporary. You hope it's not as bad as some people are predicting and that they can, we can circumnavigate these, these, these potential indicators of what, what lies ahead. Uh, but there is that sense that when it comes to property, the landlord, the tenant conundrum, uh, that we that the worst is perhaps yet to come. We're going to be speaking to the interested parties in this. We'll speak to the Resolution Foundation who surveyed this and, and, and were able to bring these figures to us. We'll speak to Landlord Action, Paul Champlina, on with us a little later. And those in this very position, do you rent out a house? What is happening? Are you getting zero, nada, when you should be getting a monthly rent being paid to you? Are you the tenant in this position? The question... How has the pandemic affected you paying or receiving rent? Let's speak with Lindsay Judge, who's author of the report and policy analyst at the Resolution Foundation. Lindsay, good afternoon to you. It's it's not a pretty picture and it appears, uh, not to overstate things, it's getting worse. Yeah, you're right. It, it's not pretty. And, and your, your your interviews beforehand brought that home, didn't it, both on the sort of landlord side and the tenant mm. side. It's a, it's a really difficult situation. And I think... Um, I think the big issue is that there's this this stock of of housing arrears and the question is how will they be resolved in the future and then of course the open question is will will that stock get bigger i mean obviously with the year 2021 is very much the kind of year of living hopefully we're all hoping to see a return to normal but the longer the pandemic goes on for um the longer and harder um the, the, those those arrears are likely to rack up people are going to draw down on their savings they're going to mm. exhaust the goodwill of their landlords and the like landlords are going to exhaust the goodwill of their lenders so 
um, the longer um, the duration really matters here. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, I would say, although the very seductive calls and powerful calls from landlords and comments from tenants as well, what there, there does seem to be, a, and I don't know if this is your experience at the at the Resolution Foundation, but certainly a lot of people saying actually we've got a good relationship between the landlord and the tenant, but we're sort of in this irredeemable conundrum where we're not quite sure what to do because the landlord doesn't want to kick anyone out and make them homeless and the, the tenant had previously been great at paying but this whole pandemic thing suddenly pitched up and caused all sorts of havoc and uh, and is not likely to resolve itself in the immediate future in certain areas where people were hoping to get back to work etc so it, it is I mean the conundrum is perhaps the right word here yeah, I think that's true. And I think, I think the really important point is is that um, there's a, a lot of people in housing arrears now who probably never expected to be in that position. So there are people who are working before the pandemic. They they profitably had quite high housing costs. And of course, they've been hit by a, a big income shock and their housing costs are, are very hard to flex. It's quite hard to reduce your rent. You can mm -hmm. negotiate it down with your landlord for a short period of time, but that, that can't be sustained. I mean, the other thing that's really striking, of course, with the private rented sector is, is how different it is. So you get very, very different experiences um, across the board. You get good tenants, bad tenants, you get good landlords, bad landlords. And um, that's, that's a problem. And I think it's definitely true that, that policy could do more to help sort of regularize those relationships between yeah. tenants and landlords. What, what is the, I mean, this is perhaps a separate conversation uh, Lindsay but I mean going forward we, you know we, we're constantly seeing headlines every month in the last 10 years of the the spiraling uh, cost of, of rent and how, I think only the Daily Express seems to celebrate that as a good thing uh, look your house costs another it's gone up another hundred thousand quid in value and you know I guess if you're 78 that's probably a great thing because you've got more to leave to somebody but if you're trying to buy one or rent one it's, it's impossible so this whole rental discussion is it, again without sounding like the ultimate pessimist here uh, this isn't getting any better either no, it's definitely true that there was, a, of course, a housing affordability problem before the pandemic hit. We, we've talked a lot before about the, the share of income that, that private renters in particular spend on their housing. It's, it's sometimes quite quite eye watering. Um, I think there's another question really is about what, you know, what were they getting for their money? And of course, on the whole, living in the private rented sector is poorer quality. It was interesting, your, your landlord interview about, about damp. Um, yep. But also, of course, that, that's not a very secure home. And I think that, that was the really critical issue before the pandemic. And in a sense, is still the critical issue. It's not a secure tenure. Um, the government has talked um, for a while about reforming the relationship between the private landlord and the tenant and giving tenants more security and trying to, sort of pro again, professionalise that, that relationship. Um, and I think that will, will have to come back on the agenda at some point in time. I would have thought so. Listen, great to have you on, Lindsay. Thank you. Lindsay Judge, who is the author of that report uh, and policy analyst at the Resolution Foundation. We're right back to your calls on this very issue. Uh, whatever else you perm from the programme along the way, uh, the lines are still open. Uh, we'll take your calls and responses to any of the issues we stumbled across this afternoon on 0344 499 1000. It's Ian Collins on Talk Radio. The time is quarter past two. Online, on DAB Plus and on your smart speaker. If that's the only way we can open up our schools, then I think we should do it. Talk Radio.